Hello, welcome to another episode in the Modding Game Tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering cameras. So we're going to be implementing a couple uh, pretty simple cameras. The first one is going to be a follow camera that is the very simplest. You just center the player on the screen as the player moves around. And then the second one is going to be a Y sort camera. And a Y sort camera is basically the same thing, but the, um, the sprites are sorted based on their Y position, which can give the illusion of depth. Uh, based on drawing order. This is seen in games like Sardew Valley. When you walk behind a tree, you're covered up by the tree. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at our base code here. So I have a very, very simple uh, starting code here that just has a player that can move around and some uh, static sprites in the background. I just thought it'd be a little too much to write this from the ground up all in one video, uh, but I will explain how I did this. I just have a list of sprites and sprites are defined here. I just made them a class that holds a texture, a destination rectangle, and a source rectangle. If you don't know anything about that, I would recommend looking at my older videos. Um, but yeah, then also every sprite can update itself and draw itself. Although the uh, base sprite doesn't have any update functionality. The player sprite, however, um, inherits from the sprite and overrides the update method, allowing for us to move this, uh, the player around. So let's go ahead and implement a camera. First one, follow camera. So follow camera.cs. Let's put it in the right namespace. So mine's in the YT game. Let's create a public class. I'm gonna call it follow camera. And let's think about what we need here. Well, a camera has a position, right? So I'm going to create a public vector two position. And I'm making it public because um, we're going to be using this a lot. We're going to be muting, mutating it a lot. It's a pretty publicly known attribute, so it'd be a good thing to make it public. Um, now I'm going to create a constructor here because we probably want to be able to actually make an instance of this uh, camera. And then we're going to provide um, an initial position. You don't have to do this. You can just make it zero, 0, no matter what. But I think it's pretty useful just in case. This type of position equals position. And now we have initial position. So what does a camera need? Well, at, at minimum, a camera needs to be able to follow something, right? So let's go ahead and make a method for doing that. Let's make a public void follow. And we need to follow a target. We're going to define a target as a rectangle. So this is our target. And if we're going to want to center thing on, things on the screen, we're going to need to know how big our screen is. So I'm going to provide a vector to screen size argument here. OK, so now let's go ahead and actually create this logic. And so what this fault uh, is going to do is it's just going to reposition our camera around the player. So I'm going to say position equals a new vector two. And then for the arguments, let's think about how this works. So traditional 2D cameras are not actual real cameras. Um, there's no actual camera in your game that's like moving, you know, like moving around. It's actually the opposite. Um, we have some sort of uh, target and then everything moves around it. And so this means that all the positions are, the position of the camera is essentially inverted from the player's position in this example. So let's look at this little thing here. What we need to do here um, in order to actually center this, uh, the screen is to actually get the center, the top left position of the player if it were centered. And the way to do that is to get half of the screen width and then subtract half of the player's width. Same thing for the height. And that's how we'd get the initial offset here. Then what we have to do is we have to account for the translation of the player. So let's say the player moved 100 to the right. Well, we still want to keep the player in the center, right? So now the offset of the camera would be negative 100. So essentially the camera's position is the inverse of the player's position because in order to recenter it, we then have to sub resubtract 100. Now in actual world space and actual like collision space with wrecks and stuff, we're not actually moving the player there, but visually we are keeping everything centered based on the inverse of the player's position. It's a lot to wrap your head around in the beginning, but as soon as you grasp it, it becomes that much more simpler. So what does this look like in code? You know, just get it over with, stop, stop, stop yapping. <laughs> um, so basically we wanna be able to get the initial, um, you know, position of the player, and then basically just subtract the offset. So let's go ahead and get the player's um, the player's position here, and we're gonna get remember we're gonna get the negative of it, so negative target dot x, and I'm gonna do negative target dot y, and then we need to 
re-add back that screen size here, so that half screen width minus this uh, target's width. So we're going to add, and then we want the screen size uh, dot x divided by two minus the target dot width divided by two. And same thing for the screen height, so screen size dot y divided by two plus, tar or not plus, minus target dot height divided by two. Okay, and that's, that's the whole thing. That's the entire formula for this follow camera. We can now use it in our program. So I'm gonna to go to our game1.cs and create a private follow camera camera variable here. And then inside of the constructor, I will initialize it. So camera equals a new instance. And remember we uh, said that we wanted an initial position here. So I'm just gonna say vec2 of zero. Doesn't matter because we're gonna immediately override it as soon as we update. Um, and now what we're gonna do is in the update, we basically have to follow the camera every frame, right? So after we update all of our sprites, we want to reset our camera's position. So we're gonna do camera.follow, and now we're gonna to need to be able to assign a target. Now I myself have defined a variable that's, that um, has our player here. Here is our player. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just pass in the player.destination rect. And then for the screen size, uh, we have to use the graphics device manager to get that. And so for that, we have to do a new vector two, and it's very wordy. I don't know why they do this, but graphics dot preferred back buffer width, and then graphics dot preferred back buffer height. Then what we can do is inside of the draw here, we can replace this um, temporary vector two of zero with our camera dot position. We can then run this code. And we have our player centered, we move around, and as you can see, everything, it looks like everything is, you know, our player is moving and our camera is following them. But in reality, you know, as programmers, we know that everything is actually moving around us. But it's a cool little illusion, you know. Now I have to warn you here. You'll notice that in my sprite.cs when I draw with this offset, I'm creating a temporary destination rectangle. I am not actually changing the destination rectangle of our sprite. We're not actually moving things around. That, that could be terrible for this, it would not work. This is only the rect of where it will actually be displayed on the screen here. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do the uh, Y sort camera. So it's pretty much the same thing. I'm actually going to just dispose of this since we already know it works. So I'm just gonna say Y sort camera here and I'm gonna change the name here to Y sort camera and also spell it right, hopefully. Okay, um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this and then go to our um, camera here in our game mode CS and say Y sort camera. And then inside of the Y sort camera, well, we're going to have to have more functionality because the Y sort camera needs to uh, be able to sort the sprites and for that it's going to need to know the sprites um, So we're going to do a public void uh, draw pass in our sprite patch because we need a sprite patch to draw anything in mono game um, And then pass in a list of sprites Now what you can do is you can actually separate the logic out Let's say that you think that the uh, Y sorting part of the camera is not actually like relevant to the camera and instead should just be a different sort of thing, you can do that too. You can just Y sort outside the camera and then just draw everything normally. Um, but basically all this is is just sorting a list. Okay, so now we need to actually sort our sprites and there's a lot of efficient ways to do this, but we're just gonna be sorting them every frame because it's not a big deal in this example. Um, the better way would be to hold a list of already sorted sprites and as you add sprites in, you would then resort them. Um, but that is a whole different system. But the idea is there. Um, so I'm going to create a list of sprite and call it our sorted sprites. This is going to be sprites dot, and then we basically just need to sort them, or not sort them, but dot order, order by, and then this will take in a key selector, and this will sort them in ascending order, which is what we want. So now what we need to do is basically just create a tempor temporary variable object, why not? Um, and then here we're going to say, what are we sorting by? So it's going to be object dot, uh, destination rectangle dot y and then we need to put this to a list what this is basically doing is it's just sorting our list of sprites based on their direct dot y attribute and then we're spitting out this sorted sprites here 
Now we can just loop over them and draw them and it will be in order. So now we can just say for each uh, sprite sprite in sorted sprites. And then we'll just do sprite dot draw and provide our position here. Oh, and the sprite batch, of course. Okay, and now to, in order to see the results, we have to replace our regular uh, for loop here with our camera dot draw, pass in the sprite batch, and then pass in our sprites. Now if we run this program, we will see that when we move over things, look at that, it looks like we're behind them, which is pretty cool. Now of course with grass, you wouldn't want this because it's grass, you wouldn't ever be behind the grass, I don't think. Um, and so you would basically just exclude that, like have a separate layer below this that you would just draw on its own. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Now we look like we're behind things, but as soon as we get too far, we go in front of them. Pretty cool stuff. Now I did change um, the Y to bottom here because it's a little bit better to sort by the bottom. Um, it just looks a little bit nicer in these type of Y sort camera things. Uh, but the basic idea is the same thing. You could, you could do this, you could do an X sort camera. You could do all these sort of things. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool stuff. So yeah, that's basically it for the concept of 2D cameras in uh, Monogame. There are a lot of different types of cameras that I didn't really cover, like bounding box cameras and things like that. Um, it's a little bit too much to do like every single type of camera in a 2D game all in one video. So if you want a, you know, a part two, like an advanced cameras, uh, let me know. But the basic idea is the same as this. Everything moves around a target and we draw it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, make sure to uh, like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to join my uh, Discord, where there are a lot of people like me and me that will help you out with any questions you have. Also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to make videos like this for you. And yeah, see ya.